Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to take a look at something known as um, the uniform distribution and we're also going to look at a normal distribution. So remember when we're talking about a distribution, um, typically, and we've seen this picture of a normal distribution uh, quite often in this class where we're saying here is kind of the average and things are distributed um, both to the left and to the right. The normal distribution looks like this bell-shaped curve. A uniform distribution really means um, that there's an equally uh, likely chance of everything to happen. So let's take a look at a problem so see if we can explain that a little bit. A particular employee arrives at work sometime between 8 and 8.40 a.m. Um, if this were a normal distribution, we would say over here is 8 o'clock and over here is 8.40. In a normal distribution, we would expect to see a lot more people um, arriving right around 8.20 as an example, a rough example. It might not be exactly accurate. And closer to 8.40, we get a little, a few stragglers. Maybe work is supposed to start at, um, let's say, 8.30. So let's imagine that 8.30 is, is right in here. Um, we'd see a lot of people, a few people arriving really early, a lot of people 10 minutes early, um, a fair amount of people right on time. And then we start to see kind of this drop off, a few people coming in 10 minutes late. That's a normal distribution. We're gonna start with something easier and say, what if this was uniform? In a uniform distribution, we would have between 8 o'clock and 8.40, according to, to this, a particular employee arrives between 8 o'clock and 8.40. Based on past experience, the company has determined that the employee is equally likely to arrive at any time between 8 o'clock and 8.40. What that really means is, let's just say this were um, maybe five minute increments and this isn't gonna be drawn very well but he's equally likely at any point in time. So what do I gotta do here? Five times six is 30, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Poorly drawn, but hopefully it gets the point across. Like here's eight o'clock, here's 8.05, 8.10, 8.15, 8.20, 8.25, 8.30, 8.35, 8.40, 8.45, 8.50, 8.60, 8.70, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 
the average is really simple. It hasn't changed, um, especially since this is uniform. We, we're basically looking at something, I'm not going to divide it all up again, but we're looking at a uniform distribution where every weight is equally likely from 50 all the way to 64. Finding the average weight in here is simply doing the traditional mean, 64 plus 50, so I have 114 divided by 2. I end up with an average mu of 57. Um, and I'll write the formula for mean. The, the mean formula was simply b plus a divided by 2. Um, the two endpoints were a and b. The standard deviation formula ends up being b minus a divided by the square root of 12. And that's where the, um, the, the formula, where the 12 is derived from, is in. So in this case, really simple. If I want to find the standard deviation, again, of a uniform distribution, one where it's equally likely for every single weight of that french fry, I'm going to take b minus a, in this case, 64 minus 50, and divide it by the square root of 12. Uh, 14 divided by the square root of 12. 0 0.0415 if I round that up. So that's the standard deviation. So standard deviation 4.0415. So the next thing I want to take a look at is the normal distribution. Uh, so in this sense, they, they told us uh, for this individual, they have an average of 60 and a standard deviation of 1.4. So if you think back earlier in the semester, we talked about these standard deviations. When you go from the average, we will look going out up to three standard deviations. So Typically, we would have just said standard deviation 1, 2, and 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. But just remember that this is always mu, the average. And here is mu plus one standard deviation. This is mu plus two standard deviations and mu plus three standard deviations, basically adding 1.4 each time. So I have 60, 60 plus 1.4. Uh, I've got 61.4, I add it again, and then add another 1.4. And I do the same thing going this way, only now I'm subtracting minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 standard deviations. Remember in a standard deviation, or in the empirical rule, between negative 1 to 1 standard deviation, there was approximately 68.7%. Um, uh, between negative 2 and 2, we said 95%. And between negative 3 to 3, we had 99.7%. Quite honestly, I think we even simplified it a little bit more and just said we called this the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about that percentage. 95%, that's between two standard deviations. U plus 2, mu minus 2. Uh, a couple other ones that they're going to ask, like where is this? Well, here is 15%. Visually, I'm looking at it and saying, well, 15%, um, you know, on both sides, that means over here I've got another 15%. That's like 30% already out there, which means this has to be one standard deviation away. Now you can kind of visually see that two standard deviations and three especially get really way out onto the, the wings there. But that's all they're looking for is what is the standard deviation that is being used here. So that's the initial um, talk for 8.1 and 8.2 about the uniform and normal distribution. Uh, I'm going to put together another video for 8.3 specifically, which talks about that normal distribution in a little bit more depth. So stay tuned.